Yellowstone supervolcano. What is heating the boiler? A new way to estimate the magma underneath Yellowstone. In the video before this one, we talked about the shocking revelation recently made by geologists with new technology imaging underneath that there is a mantle plume under the Yellowstone caldera and is being fed as a supervolcano caldera from Baja California, which is of course in the subduction zone on the west coast. And that's very unusual because a mantle plume is usually found at the borders of a continent. But this mantle plume under Yellowstone curves north-northeast coming from Baja and feeding Yellowstone. Now, what is heating the boiler? According to Washington State University, the researchers have found a new way to estimate how fast the magma is recharging beneath the Yellowstone supervolcano. While their findings offer no help in predicting if the volcano will erupt, they can now get a better understanding of a key factor. That is a pool of basalt magma recharging the Yellowstone system and how it works. It is the coal in the furnace that's heating up things. This is what Peter Larson, a professor in the Washington State University School of the Environment says, it's heating up the boiler. The boiler is what explodes. This tells us what is heating the boiler. Some 640,000 years ago have passed since the volcano's last major eruption. And from what we know in one of my past videos yesterday, that was a double eruption uh, 170 years apart. I guess it wasn't over when it first erupted and it continued spouting out whatever it had to release. So, uh, that was a very big eruption, a VEI-8. And he says that it can be a super eruption having produced one of the largest known blasts on Earth and spewing more than 2,000 times as much as Mount St. Helens volcano did in 1980. A major element in the volcano's power is the explosive, silica-rich rhyolite that, break, that breaks through the Earth's crust during an eruption. Larson and his team focused on the plume of basalt magma heating the rhyolite from below. Larson said, this gives us an idea of how much magma is recharging the volcano be careful, he says, every year. It gives us an idea of how much magma is recharging the volcano every year. This is what Larson said, and his findings are in the issue of journal Geosphere. With funding from National Science Foundation, the researcher spiked several hot springs in Yellowstone National Park with deuterium. That's a stable hydrogen isotope. So they spiked it, they threw it in there to see what uh, would come out. The researchers used the length of time needed for deuterium concentrations to return to background levels and the temperature of the hot springs to calculate the amount of water and heat flowing out of these springs. And using deuterium for estimating heat flow is safe for the environment and has no visual impact to distract from the park visitors' experience. The team found that previous studies underestimated the amount of water cursing through the springs and the amount of heat leaving these springs. The data also allowed the team to estimate the amount of magma entering the supervolcano from the mantle. The study also implications, has implications for geothermal energy helping inform how heat is transported to the Earth's surface from the molten rock. And the scientists see a deeper Yellowstone magma, according to the University of Utah. Seismologists discovered and made images of a reservoir of hot, partly molten rock 
12 to 28 miles under Yellowstone supervolcano, and it is 4.4 times larger than the shallow, long-known magma chamber. This hot rock is a newly discovered deeper magma reservoir, and it would fill the 1,000 cubic mile Grand Canyon 11.2 times, while the previously known magma chamber would fill the Grand Canyon only two and a half times. So, 11 and a half, 11.2 times compared to two and a half times, that's about 4.4 times larger than they thought. This is what the postdoctoral researcher Jamie Farrell, co-author of the study, published online in Journal Science. And Jamie Farrell, of course, works for the USGS. And Farrell says, for the first time, we have, imag uh, we have imaged the continuous volcanic plumbing system under Yellowstone. This is what uh, also the author Xin Hua Huang said postdoctoral researcher geology and geophysics, stating that that includes the upper crustal magma chamber we have seen previously, plus a lower crustal magma reservoir that has never been imaged before, and that connects the upper chamber to the Yellowstone hotspot plume below. So you have the magma chamber three miles under the surface, and under that, you have the magma reservoir, and that connects to the mantle plume, which, of course, comes in from Baja, California, if you see the video before this one. So they've got all that imaged now. Now, that's why they, this is 4.4 times larger than they thought it was. This is what is feeding the boiler, from what they say. Contrary to popular perception, the magma chamber and the magma reservoir are not full of molten rock. Instead, the rock is hot, mostly spongy and uh, sponge-like and solid, with pockets of molten rock in it. Huang says a new study indicates the upper magma chamber, that's above the reservoir, averages about 9% molten rock, consistent with earlier estimates of 5% to 15% melt, and the lower magma reservoir is about 2% melt. So there is about one quarter of the Grand Canyon worth of molten rock within a much larger volume of either the magma chamber or the magma reservoir, according to Farrell. No increase in danger, they say. The researchers point out that Yellowstone's plumbing system is no larger nor closer to erupting than before, only that they now have used advanced techniques to make a complete image of the system that carries hot and partly molten rock up from the top of the Yellowstone hotspot plume, about 40 miles beneath the surface. The plume is 40 miles beneath. The roof of the magma chamber is three miles beneath. The plume, so they have the magma chamber, three miles under the surface, then you have the magma reservoir, and that ends at the 40-mile distance where the plume starts. So uh, the, about 40 miles beneath the surface to the magma reservoir and the magma chamber above it. The magma chamber and reservoir are not getting any bigger than they have been. It's just that we can see them better now using these new techniques, according to Farrell. The study co-author Fan Chi Lin Assistant Professor of Geology and Geophysics says it gives us a better understanding the Yellowstone of the Yellowstone magmatic system. We can now use these new models to better estimate the potential seismic and volcanic hazards. The researchers also say that uh, the previously known upper magma chamber was the immediate source of three cataclysmic eruptions of the Yellowstone caldera, as we know, two million years ago. 1.2 million years ago and 640,000 years ago, which was a double eruption, 170 years apart, and that it is not changed by this discovery of the underlying magma reservoir that supplies the magma chamber. The actual hazard is the same, but now we have a better understanding of the complete crustal magma system. This is according to co-author Robert B. Smith, a research and emeritus professor of geology at the University of Utah.
The three supervolcanic eruptions in Yellowstone on the Wyoming, Idaho, Montana border covered much of North America in volcanic ash. The supervolcano eruption today would be cataclysmic. Smith says so oh, the annual chances are one in 700,000. Now before this new discovery uh, with, with this new technology, researchers had thought that uh, partly molten rock moving upward from the Yellowstone hotspot plume via a series of vertical and horizontal cracks known as dikes and sills or as blobs, they still believe these types of cracks move hot rock from the plume head to the magma reservoir and from there to the shallow magma chamber. Now the anatomy of this supervolcano, the study in science titled The Yellowstone Magmatic System from the Mantle Plume to the Upper Crust by Huang, Lin, Farrell and Smith made the conclusion the research with Brandon Schmatt and the University of New Mexico and Victor Tsai at the, Cal at the California Institute of Technology Funding came from the University of Utah, National Science Foundation, and Brinston, Brinston Foundation. Yellowstone, as we know, is among the world's largest supervolcanoes. There's about 20 in the whole world, if not more. There's a couple more that they have not put in. But anyway, there's about 20. With frequent earthquakes and Earth's most vigorous continental geothermal system. It's got over 10,000 geothermal spots, areas, and over 60% of the world's geysers. It even has the biggest geyser in the world, steamboat geyser that has been erupting almost a week, every week lately, since last March. The three ancient Yellowstone supervolcano eruptions were only the latest in a series of more than 140 as the North American plate of Earth's crust and upper mantle moves southwest over the Yellowstone hotspot starting 17 million years ago at the Oregon-Idaho-Nevada border. The hotspot eruptions progressed northeast before reaching Yellowstone two million years ago. And here is how the new study depicts the Yellowstone system from bottom to top. Previous research shows the Yellowstone hotspot hot plume rises from a depth of at least 440 miles in Earth's mantle. Some researchers suspect it originates 1,800 miles deep in Earth's core. So there are those who believe that Earth, the, the Yellowstone system actually comes from the Earth's core directly somehow and dikes its way up. The plume rises from the depths northwest of Yellowstone. The plume conduit is roughly 50 miles wide as it rises through Earth's mantle and then spreads out like a pancake as it hits the upper mantle about 40 miles deep. Earlier Utah studies indicate the plume head was 300 miles wide. The new study suggests it may be smaller, but the data are not good enough to know for sure. Hot and partly molten rock rises in dikes from the top of the plume at 40 miles depth up to the bottom of the 1,200 cubic mile magma reservoir, that's about 28 miles deep. The top of this newly discovered blob-shaped magma reservoir is about 12 miles deep, according to Huang, and the reservoir measures 30 miles northwest to southeast and 44 miles southwest to northeast. Lin says having this lower magma body resolved the missing link of how the plume connects to the magma chamber in the upper crust. Now this 2,500 cubic mile upper magma chamber sits under Yellowstone's 40 by 25 mile caldera, which has the Yellowstone Lake on it as well. That's the giant crater. Farrell says it's shaped like a gigantic frying pan about three to nine miles beneath the surface, with a handle rising to the northeast. The chamber is about 19 miles from northwest to southwest and 55 miles southwest to northwest. The handle is the shallowest long part of the chamber that extends 10 miles northeast of the caldera. Now scientists once thought the shallow magma chamber was 1,000 cubic miles, but at science meetings and in published papers this year, Farrell and Smith showed the chamber was two and a half times bigger than once thought, but that has not changed in the new study. Discovery of the magma reservoir below the magma chamber solves long-standing mysteries. 
why Yellowstone soil and geothermal features emit more carbon dioxide than can be explained by gases from the magma chamber. Huang and Farrell say the deeper magma reservoir had been hypothesized because of the tremendous amount of carbon dioxide being emitted by Yellowstone. And anyway, that comes from the molten and partly molten rock. A better, deeper look at Yellowstone. As with past studies that made images of Yellowstone's volcanic plumbing, this new study used seismic imaging, which is somewhat like a medical CT scan, but uses earthquake waves instead of x-rays to distinguish rock of various densities. Quake waves go fast through cold rock, and they go slower through the hot and mount, mount, molten rock. So that's how they form the images. And here you see that, uh, depending on the depth, how it comes in from Baja, feeds the uh, west coast there, and then turns north, northeast, feeding Yellowstone. Quakes, the waves go faster through cold rock, slower through the hot molten rock, and Juan developed a technique combining the two kinds of seismic information, data from the local quakes detected in Utah, Idaho, and the Teton Range and Yellowstone by the University of Utah seismograph stations, and data from more distant quakes detected by the National Science Foundation funded EarthScope array of seismometers which was used to map the underground structure of the lower 48 states. The Utah Seismic Network has closely spaced seismometers that are better at making images of the shallower crust beneath Yellowstone, while EarthScope seismometers are better at making images of deeper structures. It's a technique com combining local and distant earthquake data, better to look at this lower crustal magma reservoir according to what Juan explains. And this is materials from University of Utah on uh, Science Daily. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.